Hey guys, Catherine here with the Crunchy Canine and today I'm going to talk to you about how to properly fit and use a prong collar or a pinch collar. So first things first, they look like evil torture devices. Um, anyone who know, has ever trained with us would know that we use them in a very gentle way and they can be an incredible training tool for any dog really. It doesn't really matter the size or what's going on with the dog. They're just, they're, overall, they're a great tool and we really recommend opening up your mind and seeing how awesome it could be for your dog training. So first things first, we strongly recommend that you invest in a quality collar. So the brand that we carry and sell to our clients is called a Herm Springer and it's made in Germany, high quality stainless steel and it's just an overall really nice collar. A couple of features, um, so here's one of them. So uh, this plate that you see on the front is actually so that the prongs open up and go in the opposite direction. And what's gonna happen is it's going to sit on the front of your dog's neck and open up off the larynx and the trachea. So it's gonna relieve the pressure off the front of the neck. Another um, pro to these collars is that they have very round edges. So they are not sharp. Some of the cheaper quality collars you're going to get in the pet store are very blunt and can be almost sharp so that's obviously not something that we want. Um, it is high quality stainless steel so you're not going to see rusting. Um, I've never had one break where some of the cheaper ones I have seen them just literally snap and this one has this little toggle plate at the end where the chain meets the collar and the cheap ones in the pet store have this weird bulky piece connector thing there. So this collar actually, like the chain slides really nicely, whereas some of the cheap pet store ones, they're just, they get stuck and they just don't work well in that sense. So we strongly recommend that you get this brand. We do sell them and there are, they do sell them in pet stores. They're not cheap in the pet store. Um, this little guy here would probably run you about 50 bucks and but they're well worth the um, investment. Okay, so 95% of the time we would only use two different sizes. There is another collar that we're not gonna show you today, which would be an exceptional case of like a dog under say 10 pounds, maybe eight pounds under, depending on the size of the dog's neck. And so those dogs might use a micro collar which we don't have any in stock right now and Herm Springer does not make them. However, the two sizes of Herm Springer that we use would be this little guy here is the 2.25 mil millimeter and this is a collar that we would use on any dog up to about between 60 and 80 pounds depending on how strong they are. So a lot of people think that they have a big dog, they need this massive collar that's just like way too big and heavy duty for their dog. You don't need that, okay? So this one is definitely um, doable for a dog up to 60 pounds, and then if they're between 60 and 80 pounds and not like super strong puller, I would go with this. We always put a backup safety on it anyway, so in the end, if this did not hold, you would have a backup safety. The next size up would be for dogs over 80 pounds and this is the three millimeter, so it's one size bigger. You can see the difference in the prongs. Let's see if I can show you. So, the plate is the same. So this is a bit of a heavier duty, co duty collar. Um, again, I wouldn't put it on a dog definitely not under 60 pounds um, and it would depend on how strong the dog was between 60 and 80 pounds and above 80 pounds definitely I would put this collar on okay so we're gonna talk about first how to undo it put it on what it should look like and then we'll show it to you how to fit it on a dog so this is a little bit tricky when you first start but you should very easily get the hang of it unless you have like arthritis in your hands so when you have the collar like this I take my pointer finger 
and I push up and then yeah sorry push up and then take and my thumb is pushing it down and I squeeze these elbows and take it apart okay so squeeze them it's hard for me to do this and put it in. Okay, so point your finger goes under, thumb goes on top, push it up. See how the elbows are up? I take my other hand and I squeeze those together and pop it out. Okay, to put it back, I squeeze them and put them back in. So it can take some practice. I definitely recommend practicing a few times before you go to put it on your dog so you're not pinching them, pulling their hair, all that fun stuff. If you, it doesn't really matter which one you do. However, if you do the end one, sometimes it can flip and end up like this. And you're gonna go, oh, I can't get my collar together. Just flip it back, okay? I like to recommend that you do one of the inside prongs, not the end one. Um, Oh, another thing that we want to think about is not having any twists in the collar. So when you put it on your dog, you should see this triangle, okay? If you go to put it on and it's all twisted, and I put it together, what's going to happen is it's going to be on my dog, Where's the... and put it on my arm so it's tight, and it's all stuck okay what that should look like on your dog is that triangle okay so it tightens and releases tightens and releases all right so which hook do we or which um loop do we attach our leash to? So when you have the collar on your dog, you're going to see that with the Herm Springer, I'm not entirely sure other brands that they have this. I think they do, but not all might. So this little guy here spins, okay? It's on a little, it's got a zip tie. This is the one that the tag would be attached to. That's why the zip tie's there. So you're gonna attach your leash to this one. You're gonna have what's called a dead ring down here. It's gonna lay flat on your dog's neck and we're not using it, okay? So that's what it's gonna look like. On your dog's neck, like that. All right. So that is the functions of this collar. That is how to do it up and um, make sure that's not twisted, how to attach your leash to it. Um, we have seen some people that attach the leash to both we do not recommend that because it doesn't have the same function. And now I'm going to show you how to fit it on a dog. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to fit the prong collar properly. So Porter is about 60 pounds, so he could go either way and he doesn't wear a prong collar anymore. But when I did train him on one, we used the 2.25, so the little guy on him. I'm gonna show you the fit with the big one. This is a three millimeter. So when you put a prong collar in your dog, you want it to sit up snug and nice and high right behind the ears, okay? When you get them low and loose, they're not as effective. And in fact, you'll be having to pull harder than if you had it nice and tight. So, I'm gonna go to do it up. It should be like a little bit awkward to do it up. And I want to make sure that the plate is, where is it? Yeah, right in the front. So you see the plate, I'm just moving his skin. But the plate sits right in the front of his neck. So see how it sits nice and high, even with gravity wanting to pull it down, it's staying up. Okay, so now how to attach my leash. So I actually have a safety on here and I'll show you how I attach a safety in a second, but I'm gonna attach the leash to that swivel hook on the collar. And it's, remember, gonna sit up nice and high. And sometimes I might need to like pull some of the hair through 
so it stays up. Now that my collar and leash are on, I take my safety and actually attach, hi, attach it to my the buckle of the leash. So let me show you. Attached there. Okay. And then I'm going to attach the safety to his regular collar. The reason I do it this way, and a lot of trainers actually don't do it this way, is because I've had dogs shake their head, and not only can the prong collar come undone if you didn't put it on properly, but I've had leashes actually pop off the swivel hook. He's very itchy right now. The swivel hook of the collar, and then they're not attached. So I attach it from this part of my leash. The purple one is my leash. This is the safety. And I attach it from there to his regular collar. So that, oh, we have another dog. He's a beagle. So that if he shook his head and the prong collar came off, I'm still attached by the regular collar. If the prong or the leash came unattached from the prong collar, I'm still attached by the regular collar. So that's how we use our safeties. So remember, you want to get the right size and the right fit so that your prong collar is effective and you don't have to pull so hard on it to get the results. Using a prong collar should be very subtle. You shouldn't need two-handed corrections. Um, your dog should not be yelping when they feel the end. Granted, there are, we've had a few dogs that were just very dramatic no matter what. Um, but it, it really does not need to be this evil torture device. In fact, your dog most likely, when done properly, should run to the front door waiting when they hear this jingling noise. All right, good luck.